Hey, I'm Chris Roth, the Professional Prospector, and today I'm going to talk to you about the beauty of naturally crystalline gold. Now, most people, when you think of gold, gold nuggets and that kind of thing, you think of these kind of rounded, blobby-shaped uh, bits of gold that can range from really small up to pretty large. And yes, grounded nuggets are very common, and... Uh, People find them panning or metal detecting, sluicing, dredging. So, what about naturally crystalline gold? Well, uh, when it almost all the rounded nuggets came out of the ground in a different shape and were rounded and reshaped by tumbling in streams and that sort of thing. But when it comes out of the ground, a lot of gold, a fair amount of gold, is naturally beautifully crystalline. That gold, when it grows in the ground, and it grows, believe it or not, out of hot water solutions, and I've done videos on, on how gold forms and, and how gold crystals grow, um, but it grows out of hot water solutions that tend to grow fairly slowly, and it can create some amazing and beautiful shapes. The beauty of naturally crystalline gold is appreciated by mineral collectors and prospectors. And in fact, uh, the crystalline forms of gold are actually much more valuable and much more desirable to collectors. I've seen specimens of crystal gold sell for 5, 10, and even 20 or 30 times the bullion value of the gold that's in the specimen. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of that here just in a minute, some just to show you how really expensive some of these beautiful crystalline forms of gold can be, because they're very rare. Now, with all the ways that crystalline gold grows, the various crystal shapes and, and what you all just call twinning, which is a, a growth of a second crystal off a first, um, with all the different crystal forms and twinning and other sorts of things that, that happen with gold, there's just almost an infinite myriad of shapes that uh, gold grows in. And the basic shape, though, is what's called an octahedron. And it's, it's actually the same shape as a diamond, where you have the, the point on top, the point on the bottom. It's basically like you took a pyramid that was right side up and a pyramid that was upside down and attach the two bases so you have that diamond shape to it. That's the actual basic crystal shape that gold grows in. Now, there's a lot of different specimens that have come from different areas, a lot of places that have produced some really unique and beautiful gold. And we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. Uh, Colorado has produced some really beautiful wire gold. Um, Nevada is famous for some of what they call it chevron gold, which is the is, is shapes like that chevron uh, together that where it grows in what's called a herringbone type of growth. Um, California has produced some beautiful leaf gold and uh, other shapes. It's just amazing the different kinds of shapes that gold can grow in. And we're going to take a look at those different forms right now. And uh, let me just dive into it and we'll get to talk about it more. So this is what more people think of when they think of gold nuggets. It's a rounded blob. Of course, this is a gigantic example, but uh, this is at least the shape and type that people think of when they think of gold nuggets. This, on the other hand, is what we're talking about when we're talking about crystalline gold. You can see all the angles of all the crystals that are kind of stuck and welded together in this specimen. It's just a beautiful piece of crystalline material that's metallic gold, just like any nugget, but it's not been rounded or worn. It's as it came out of the ground with its beautiful crystalline shape. And this type of thing is worth far more than the weight of gold to collectors. Now, crystalline gold comes in a huge variety of configurations and shapes and different formations. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of pictures, and I thought you might enjoy looking at them with me and talking about them because it's just pretty stuff to look at. This is a large museum quality specimen that was taken from the Eagle's Nest Mine in California. It's part of the Sierra Nevada gold country and it's a large piece that is very high quality and 
would sell for tens of thousands of dollars. And I can tell you that the, the price of this gold is really expensive. This piece is from Butte County, which is also in California, up at the northern end of the Sierra Nevada. And it shows some beautiful crystalline shape. It's a lot smaller than the one we looked at last. But like I say, these specimens sell for a lot higher price than just the value of the gold bullion within them. And they are so valuable because they are rare. Millions of tons of uh, ore get mined and uh, millions of ounces of gold are produced every year from mines around the planet. But very little of it is beautiful crystalline gold. So they are rare and extremely beautiful. That's why these specimens are so highly prized by collectors and sell for amounts, like I say, far exceeding the amount of gold they contain. Generally speaking, they are given a higher value if some of the original quartz vein or other matrix is still attached, as in this specimen. Here is a handful of crystalline gold nuggets from northern Nevada. These were taken by metal detector in the Rye Patch area north of Lovelock, between Lovelock and Winnemucca. And you can see that they're just beautifully crystalline and don't show any sign of rounding or wear like normal nuggets do. This beautiful piece of crystalline gold, although very different from the others I've shown you, came from Arizona and was found with a metal detector. This beautiful piece of crystalline gold is actually called the Golden Bear. If you kind of look at it, it sort of looks like a bear standing up on its hind legs, sort of. Um, it's the image of the rock hounding. Uh, Federation of Clubs in California and it's a beautiful piece on its own. If you look real close you can see some triangle shaped crystals on there and I want to draw those to your attention. Now this is a beautiful piece of leaf gold, uh, just a thin sheet from Nevada, but you can see on it the same sort of triangular crystal growth patterns that I was pointing out on the last specimen. Now this is a drawing of some natural gold crystals and if you look, you can see the triangle shapes all over the place. Basically, you can see in the one that I circled with red that it's uh, what's called an octahedron, which is basically like two pyramids, one upside down and one right side up, put together at the base so that they have that diamond shape. And in fact, this is the same crystal pattern that diamonds crystallize in. A lot of minerals actually crystallize into this shape, and gold is one of them. But you can see by looking at all the different drawings of the gold crystals shown in this illustration that they all have a repetition of the same theme of those triangle shaped growth patterns. You can see in this specimen of crystalline gold those triangular shaped patterns, uh, growth, growth crystals shown very well. And in fact, you can even see if you look closely the octahedron, the, basically the diamond shape that's displayed in this. It's a very high quality crystalline specimen that shows very well how the gold, when it grows as a crystal, it will form into those shapes. But it's not always possible to see these triangular growth patterns in a crystalline gold specimen. Um, the fact is, is that gold just grows in a myriad of shapes and together with twinning and deformed crystals and everything else, you can get just an amazing variety when you come to look at crystalline gold. In some crystal gold specimens, the gold will take the form of leaves that uh, may be interconnected, but they're just thin sheets that are just naturally formed that way. Another beautiful form of crystalline gold is that of wires. You can see the wires intertwined and growing together in different directions. There's a whole slew of different forms that just are from wires of natural gold. This beautiful mass of wires is actually the only one of all these specimens that belongs to me. I found this out in the hills of Nevada with my metal detector. It was down fairly deep, but the specimen weighs 20 grams, so it weighs about two-thirds of an ounce. And at today's prices, it's more than $1,000 worth of gold just in bullion value. But it would be a lot more valuable because of the wire specimen that it is. And so uh, I'm pretty proud of this thing. It's uh, one of my favorite finds of all time. One of the most famous sources of wire gold in the world is at Breckenridge in Colorado, where some beautiful specimens like this were found back in the early days with the old pioneers and old miners in Colorado.
Perhaps one of the most valuable forms of crystalline gold is this very specialized wire form where instead of growing as single wires you get basically a bundle of wires growing together and they often twist like this which gives the name to this form of crystalline gold which is called ram's horn. A lot of ram's horn specimens came from the old Gilman mining district in Colorado. Here's another specimen of this ram's horn type of gold, these bundles of wire that grow together. This is actually a much more common crystal pattern for the growth of natural silver. It, uh, natural metallic silver often comes in this form. But for gold it's very rare and these are incredibly high priced. Often uh, they will sell for prices in the range of 30 to 50 times and maybe even more the value of the bullion in the gold. They're just really highly prized and considered very beautiful. About 30 miles east of Reno, there's an old gold mining district called Olinghouse. And in the recent decades, there have been some underground mining there that produced some really nice specimens. This is one of them. Now the gold, it's hard to see here, but I'll tell you, it's just little tiny flakes and wires and little flat pieces that are kind of grown together into a mossy kind of a formation. Now, this stuff is soft enough that uh, literally I could take my hand and just kind of wipe the gold off the surface. It's, it's very, very, very fragile and yet they sell for huge amounts of money. Uh, this picture was taken at the Tucson Gem Show some years ago when gold was probably around 1200 an ounce. And you can see, uh, if you look closely, the price of this specimen it's about the size of a football, is $12,000, or roughly speaking, about 10 times the bullion value that's in the gold. It's an amazing thing, but the gold is very beautiful, and collectors are willing to pay for really nice pieces of crystalline gold. Here's another specimen of that mossy kind of gold from Olinghouse in Nevada, east of Reno. You can see that it's really pretty, and it does, when you're looking at it in person, sparkle and glisten. It just looks really nice, but boy, these specimens are extremely expensive. Here is another uh, specimen from the Olinghouse District in Nevada, and it has this beautiful, mossy, sparkly gold on it. And it's very pretty, but you can see, if you look closely here, the asking price for this is $45,000. That's a very pricey specimen for something that I would guess probably doesn't have more than, maybe a little more than about an ounce of gold in it. It's just amazing what the, uh, the market is for really fine crystalline gold specimens. This is a gold nugget from California that's been tossed around in a river a little bit, but not enough that it's erased the crystal shape that the thing originally had. You can kind of see the triangular growth patterns of the crystal, the diamond shapes in there if you use your imagination, but it's really deformed and unusual, and it's kind of my point. Gold comes in just a huge variety of crystalline forms. Here's a crystalline nugget from the Rye Patch area in northern Nevada, and it's really weirdly shaped, almost like a small bouquet of flowers, but if you look near the top of the nugget, you can kind of see a part of one of those triangular growth patterns that, uh, that are part of how the gold grows. It's just that it's deformed and changed and altered so much, you can only see a little bit of that. This is a piece from a pocket that was found by a friend of mine. He was digging in some quartz veins in some uh, old mining uh, areas in California and he started finding some gold and kind of traced it up and and hit a little pocket with several ounces of gold and the gold was just beautifully crystalline and this is one of the specimens of it. Here's another beautiful crystalline specimen from that same pocket with a little bit of quartz attached to it. Now uh, my recollection is it was about three to four ounces of gold and this was back in the days when gold was still you know eight hundred nine hundred dollars an ounce and he sold this to uh, he sold it wholesale to a dealer for ten thousand dollars for the whole collection and the dealer of course then turned around and sold these specimens for even more for his profit it just shows how valuable that crystalline gold can really be here is another beautiful and unique specimen of crystalline gold, but 
you know, I could go on showing you pictures like this for hours, and I've saved the best for last, so let's get to it. So here's my last piece, and if I'm trying to convince you how unusual and beautiful and weird crystalline gold can really be, this is a great place to finish up. This specimen was uh, purchased by a friend of mine. It actually was a piece of gold-rich ore. And what my friend does is he literally takes rock like this and removes and and uh, and etches and, and takes away uh, bits of the ore to create the specimen that's inside. And basically there was rock over the top of this gold and he removed the rock in such a way as to leave the specimen intact and leave the specimen beautiful while removing uh, all the stuff that wasn't a beautiful specimen. You know, it's kind of like what uh, Michelangelo used to say about, uh, you know, doing a, uh, a sculpture. He would remove all of the pieces of rock that weren't part of his sculpture. And that's kind of what my friend does. He removes the rock that isn't the part of the beautiful gold specimen. Now, this specimen will sell for huge amounts. I can't hardly tell you what the amount of gold that's in it is but it's you know substantial but not huge and my guess is that uh, when it finally sells this will sell for something between 50 to 100 times the actual metallic gold value that's pretty impressive and uh, that, that just goes to show you the real value of crystalline gold so if you get into some crystalline gold boy don't melt it down and don't send it off to a refiner be sure to get the full value of it because the value is huge. Now, if you are interested in finding some of this amazing crystalline gold for yourself, well, a lot of the crystalline gold these days is found with metal detectors. And I cover, you know, finding gold with metal detectors on my channel regularly. It's a skill. It's a knowledge set. And uh, if you want to increase your skill and be able to go out and find gold, either with a metal detector or dry washer or other tools, well, I wrote a book called Fistful of Gold that tells about the skills you need and explains to the prospector how to become an experienced and knowledgeable, skilled gold finder. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold, and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month, and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website, and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.